All right, guys, Saturday the 6th of January 2024. Welcome back to the garage, to the Tush Mahals. Tush coming at you. We are back working on the 59 Triumph TR3A project. And we're continuing on the interior restoration. And I've got the dash cappings or the cockpit cappings out here on display. And we're actually just uh, trying to fit up to the car. I've got a couple sets. I've got about two and a half sets of... Uh, of cappings to try out and fit to see which ones fit the best on this car. They came with the black ones, uh, as you can see here, fitted on the uh, front here. Um, but these actually look like they were at one point red, as you can probably see there. It looks like these were dyed. So I actually have three red sets of capping. You can also see some red coming through here. So anyway, I'm just trying to figure out which ones I want to go with, which ones fit the best on the car. You would think that the ones that are wrapped in black fit the best, but actually that's not the case. Uh, in some regards, the red pieces, and you can see I've got a different red color here than this color. So this is from a different set. This is from a different set. And that's from the same set as this. But we're doing a bit of mix and match here and seeing what fits the best and what's in the best condition to work with before we go ahead and start stripping these in order to rewrap them. So the one piece you don't see on display here is the one that goes across the top of the doors where your arm rests on. And I've got those over here. These are the two best ones that I have out of the set. Uh, the black ones that came with the car are not in very good shape at all. So we're going to be going with this set on the doors. So I think I pretty much made a selection of which ones I want to go with. So now it's to the point where we're going to have to uh, start stripping these down to bare metal so we can get them nice and clean in order for the new glue to stick with the new material. Now, talking about material, I think I'd mentioned this on the previous video when I was doing the dash. It's kind of a mixture on this car on what is actually covered in leather and what's covered in vinyl. So let me go over that really quickly. So the Moss kit that I bought actually comes with some leather bits. And uh, the leather bits are used for this piece. So this is wrapped in leather. The door tops are wrapped in leather. And this uh, dog leg piece, they call it, is wrapped in leather. And these other pieces here, these two pieces here, or actually it'll be three pieces, are wrapped in vinyl. So it's a kind of a mixed media thing going on with the cappings here. I guess where the wear items are here, the elbow capping um, and the door uh, piece are the ones that get the most wear. So that's where they've got the leather in there. Not sure why the front capping piece is leather, but We'll go with that anyway. So it's going to be a little bit more difficult working with the leather. So I'm going to have to probably do a little bit of a different technique than I did with the dash. Probably going to have to introduce some heat and possibly some steam to get this stretched. Apparently this piece here is the most difficult to do because of the shape to get it without uh, wrinkles in it. You can see uh, whoever did the restoration on this car before didn't do a great job on the old piece, you can see how wrinkled up they are. So we're gonna to try to avoid that and do a little bit better than that. I don't know if I can get it as perfectly done as this one. I'm not sure if this is actually leather or vinyl that's on here, but anyway, they did a pretty good job on this one. And uh, we'll attempt to uh, try to get something that looks as good as this one does as well. So that's the job for today. So we'll get to uh, starting to strip these. What I'm gonna to try to do is I'm going to try to remove the material uh, without sort of tearing it so I can actually see I mean I do have some other pieces to use as sort of templates to see how these were actually wrapped but I'd prefer to keep the material intact if possible to see how it was cut in the corners and you know it's probably easier just if I do that and uh, use these old covers as templates for the new ones. Okay, first one is done. This is the passenger dog leg. And the reason I'm uh, labeling these is, first of all, I don't want to get confused. Second of all, uh, some of you might know a Lynn has a 
project, a 57 TR3 uh, that he's going to be restoring at some point. And I believe Alin will probably want to make his own. He tends to like to make his own uh, material. So I'll use these or I'll give these to him as templates to use when he wants to recover his interior panels. So we'll keep those for him. Anyway, there's what the uh, old or the underside of that piece looks like with you know, heavily covered with glue. So I'm hoping we'll be able to just wire brush this up and that should clean it up. But uh, we'll see how this goes. I do have some acetone that might uh, help it out as well, but I believe a wire brush will get that off. So maybe I'll uh, break out the wire brush and see how we do here before we decide what course of action we need to, we need to do or need to use to get these cleaned up. First one is done and it looks pretty good. So combination of the um, angle grinder and we're using one of these uh, fiber stripping desks, like a paint stripping desk. So just obviously be careful on the edges. You catch the edges, the grinder is going to jump pretty badly. So that seemed to work pretty well on the exterior and part of the interior. Then I dropped down to a Dremel with a um, grinding wheel because you can't get to the shallower edge on here is really difficult to get inside. So I was able to get the little uh, Dremel grinding disc in there. And then I followed that up and these have become really invaluable to me in a lot of my projects. These little, um, I'm going to call them Scotch-Brite bobbins. So these fit in the Dremel, these little guys. So I finished the, up after the grinding disc with one of these in the Dremel. And that seemed to have cleaned it up pretty well. So these have been invaluable in a lot of little projects I've done. So I think these were an Amazon purchase. I don't know exactly what they're called, but you could probably find them under 3M Dremel, something like that. Anyway, so it's going to be a long, dirty process. A lot of, uh, I'm wearing a mask because a lot of uh, rust and old glue residue is coming off these. I'm not too concerned about, you probably can't see deep in here because it's pretty dark, but there's still quite a bit of uh, old glue residue on the top, but I'm not concerned about that. I'm just concerned about, you know, uh, cleaning up the edges enough so that there's uh, the glue has something nice and fresh to stick to. So again, it's going to be a long process to do all these, but it has to be done. So there's number one. We'll continue on doing the same process for the rest of them. All right, quick note. These are the cappings that go on the rear of the dog leg at the top, and then they join into the rear panel and there's actually some material here that's just left untucked so if you're doing these i think that's normal because this material ends up getting or taking up a little bit of space potentially where it meets with that uh, dog leg capping and then just gets tucked in i guess behind the dog leg capping so you want to have that extra material there on these pieces these pieces so just a quick note there to show you uh, we're making progress. We've got uh, three of the cappings done. We're going to do these two and then uh, we'll give you a quick update and a quick look at what we've got over in the top of the, the hood of the TR250 is serving as my workbench. All right, we're making pretty good progress on the other pieces that we've stripped. We're down now to the door caps, which are a little bit different. First of all, they have these little uh, plug in the back of them. I think I can just pry these out. I believe I have new ones of these up in my parts bin somewhere. I have to source them out. But I believe the material gets tucked in behind these and then the plugs get pounded in. There's also a foam core on the top of these. So when you rest your arm, you've got a bit of a foam padding. And there's also, I think from the factory, a little bit of batting that goes over top of this before it's wrapped. So it's meant to be a little bit spongy. So we've got to be a little bit more careful, I think, here as far as the heat is concerned to... Uh, Get these apart but um, anyway I'm gonna try to get those caps out first and then we'll go from there all 
All right, just wanted to give you a quick shot of what that button looks like. So here it is. I've just pried it out with a small screwdriver and uh, just got a little tab on the end of it, I believe. Something like that. So there you go with the material tucked in behind it. And then it just finishes off that area. I don't know if you can see that very well. There you go. So one in each end to remove. They're in there pretty snugly after I don't know how many years this might be original. But anyway, that's what you got to do to be able to get the material off of this piece. All right, guys, welcome back. It's the next day, and as you can probably tell, we've moved back inside on the coffee table, and it's cold out in the garage, so I prefer to be a bit more comfortable when we're doing this next session of wrapping these pieces, whether it be in leather, like the front capping here, or in vinyl, like the rear capping over here. Anyway, we we're gonna go through the process of doing these just like we did the dash covering on the last video. So got pretty much uh, everything standing by. We've got a little steamer over here that we might be able to utilize. We've got a heat gun over there that we might be able to utilize on like the leather pieces. And for example, I think the steamer and the heat gun is going to probably be essential. We have a little anvil and a hammer over there. And that black case there is an actual uh, chisel or a punch kit. Uh, we need to get a few of these dents out. You can see some dents here in the cappings. These are not uh, covered with any foam or batting. So if the dents are left in, you may see those through the material. So we're going to try to attempt to at least make these look a little bit better. They don't have to be perfect, but I want them to be better than what they are. Uh, we have a vise there, and uh, we're going to just use that to hopefully steady the piece a little bit. So that can obviously be clamped down to anything. That's just an old wood vise. And we've got a piece of wood here that we're going to be using to sort of clamp in to the vise just to hold some of the longer pieces so I can get the material stretched a little easier. We've got this little piece of wood here, which is going to hopefully help us when we get to the um, these cappings are going to be the most difficult. And this really is just a kind of a buck here to set this piece in here to help hold it and be able to stretch the material a little bit better. Again, we'll hold this in our vise as well. So we're probably going to do this piece last. This is the most complicated and the most difficult. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we did get new buttons for these pieces, which are the uh, door capping pieces, the ones that go across the top doors. And the material here is captured by a, a steel button that goes into either end. We have new buttons. We found those last night in the part stash. So we pulled those out and we're ready to go. There are the rubber uh, cores or the rubber rounds for the tops of the door caps. We've rescued those successfully, so we're just going to reuse those. I do have some batting standing by, and we'll get to that eventually as well. So I think I've got everything I've, I need to be able to go on this. Um, we've got some glues over there sitting on top of my register, just warming up there or out in the garage. So we've got some uh, Super 77 3M product. We've got the Gorilla Glue, and we've got a brushable LePage's contact cement for areas that are going to be difficult to spray. For example, the end of these cappings here, you're not going to be able to really spray any adhesive. So we're going to actually brush some contact cement in these areas to hold the material down before we push the button in. So probably good to have some brushable contact cement just for some of the detail areas. All right, let's get started. And uh, I think we'll do the easiest piece first, or supposedly the easiest piece, which will be the rear capping. So again, first part of the process will be to uh, get some of the dents out before we move on to starting with the material. This piece at the rear is vinyl, uh, so I have that standing by. And uh, we'll do that piece first just to get our confidence up before we move on to some of the more difficult pieces. All right, here we go. All right, as mentioned, the first thing we're gonna do is just uh, smooth out a bit of the dents. This uh, piece, or some of these pieces, are very, very light gauge and very malleable. All I'm doing, basically, is just got my little anvil here, and we're just, uh, just straightening out 
loosen his back flange a little bit. Again, this is going to be bent to the contours of the car. I'm not going to try to play around too much with the, uh, the rolls in the end because this is the, the way it sort of fits on the car. But I just want to make these areas fairly flat down here before we go ahead and, uh, and wrap it. Okay, that's a little bit better. So I think what I'll do is I'll just uh, work on these little edges back in here and uh, a little back here. And then I think we'll be ready to go ahead clean this up with some Windex and uh, then we can start. We'll have to cut a piece of material for this out of the uh, roll that was given to us or provided to us. And um, we'll go ahead and we'll start uh, gluing it probably from the center out, stretching it along the way. This piece is in vinyl, so I don't think it should be too difficult. The most difficult areas are probably gonna just be obviously wrapping the ends. I do have the old pieces that I stripped off of the car to see how it was cut previously. So that should be a little bit helpful to me. I also have a couple of pieces that are still with material on the on the actual piece, so I can actually probably use those as a template to see how this was wrapped as well. Now, wrapping is not my forte. I can do the centers okay, but when it gets to the end, I'm not great at it, but uh, willing and learning along the way. All right, I think we're ready to go. We've got our material cut from the roll. Uh, that is the entire length of the roll, so just enough to... Uh, manage the length of this rear piece. That's obviously the longest piece. The material for the front dash capping is in leather. It's already comes pre-cut in the kit, so I don't have to worry about that piece. So what I'm going to do now, as I'd mentioned, uh, I've got some glass cleaner here, and uh, we're just going to clean off this piece before we start applying the glue. And we are going to work from the center out. So I'm just going to apply some glue here and some glue here stick it and then continually stretch it outwards to the left and right before we make it all the way to both ends and then we'll wrap it around the ends which again it's going to be the uh, most difficult part of all of these pieces just the wrapping at the ends of the piece I don't think I'll ever be a professional upholsterer. I'm still trying to figure out how the best way to wrap the ends is going to be, even with the help of the other templates, still a little bit of a challenge, but I think we're getting there. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> made some relief cuts here to enable me to wrap this around. So basically all I'm doing is trying to figure out how to do it before I apply any glue, make my cuts where I need to be, then apply the glue and then stick it back, hopefully in the same location that uh, I had it before. Anyway, I think it's turning out okay. So far, this piece is looking good. It's stretched out fine. So uh, all is good so far. You know, I'll finish this off and we'll give you a, a look of this piece. And then we'll uh, start on the next two pieces, which will be the pieces that actually sit in front of this capping uh, on the sides before the B-post. And just a quick look at uh, the end result of that piece now that it's been glued up. So I think it looks pretty good. Seems to have wrapped around okay, hiding the ends nicely. So I think we're good. So I think we'll just let this set up for a couple of uh, minutes. 
I'll take the clamps off and we'll move on, move on to the next panels. As I mentioned, a couple of these have a few pretty good dents just in the top edges of them. So what I've been doing is I've just been using, so I've got this chisel tip and this has got a rounded tip on it. And I've just been using my chisel on the anvil to just try to knock those out a bit. So we'll go after this one first, see if we can make this look a little bit, uh, a little bit better. Doesn't have to be perfect, but we'll get it to look a bit better than it does. There's that dent there now. It's definitely shallower. Probably do a little bit more work on it, but uh, that's definitely looking better than it was. That's looking pretty good now. Was there. It's much better. Let's go after a couple of these up here. Definitely better. We'll go after this guy. Still there, but definitely better. Maybe get it a little bit better than that. The good thing about this chisel is it's got interchangeable tips. So I've got this round one here I can use. Or if we want to go a little bit more precise, we can go, that's more of a pick though. It's hard to focus in on these, that's pretty pointy. So I don't think we want to use that one. I think we'll try it with this ball tip. So they're just uh, interchangeable, spring-loaded. Try this one. Yeah, I think that's about as good as that's going to get. And we, have to, we don't want to go too crazy on this, so I think that's definitely looking better than it was. So we'll go on to the next uh, panel. We'll do the same thing, just get all the major dents out. And then Windex and wrap. All right, so this is the piece that is rear of that dog leg for your arm. So basically the B post, and then this rolls into this area here, rolls into the piece we just finished, the rear rail. Now, I just wanted to make uh, a note that, remember, this piece actually has some extra material here where it fits into that dog leg that's not affixed to the actual panel itself. It's just kind of an overhang, and that gets tucked in behind the uh, dog leg capping. So got to make sure that we have a little extra overhang on this material when we fasten it to the actual piece. So I've just fit it back on again using this piece as a template to see how we need to cut things and how they need to lay. So we'll go ahead and we'll glue this up and do our best to get the uh, new material put on this piece.
Okay, the uh, two rear dog leg cappings are done, and I think they turned out pretty well. Again, they've got the little bit of material here at the end. I'm not sure quite how to finish this. Maybe we'll just tuck this in like I did on this side. I basically just glued this uh, seam shut on the end, but uh, I may just wait and decide what to do with that until we actually put them on the car. This may just actually tuck under that uh, leading edge of the, uh, the B-post uh, finisher. So <clears throat> they're done as far as I think I'm gonna go. So now time to work uh, with some leather. And I think we'll work on the uh, very front capping first. That seems to probably be the easiest out of the remaining panels that are left that need to go into leather. So let's grab that and start working on that. All right, guys, I finished up the uh, the front piece and uh, finished up not too badly. Minimum amount of wrinkles. I can live with them anyway, and they're in a good spot there on the underside of it, so they're a little bit less visible. So now we're on to the uh, top of the door rails. And if you recall, these have these little uh, rubber pieces that fit in this channel here. They're glued in. And then on top of these, there's a batting that's uh, glued on top of these to give it a little bit of a, a, little bit of a padding so when you rest your elbow on the door cappings, it's nice and comfortable. So we do have some batting uh, standing by, but we're gonna get these rubber pieces glued to the rails first, and then we'll move on from there. We have our two leather pieces standing by for here, again, pre-cut in the kit. Um, so after these two pieces, we've only got the two most difficult pieces left there on the floor. So let's get crack a on these and see if we can wrap this up in the next couple hours. All right, we've got the rubber pieces glued to the rails. And now I've got some of this batting. So this is just like a cotton batting versus cotton balls. And we've just got it sort of laid on top of the rail. What we're gonna do is we're gonna double this up. So I've just got this glued and we're gonna fold this. Then we're gonna glue it to the top of that rubber rail and then we're gonna trim it up before we start to wrap it in material. All right, the batting's been trimmed down and glued to the rubber piece. So we're on to the next step, which is to apply the cover. So we'll apply some glue and uh, we'll stretch this the best we can over the top of this uh, batting material and fasten it down here on the metal edges. Again, the tricky point on this one will be tucking the material into these little round end pieces before we finish it with the uh, buttons and I do have the new buttons for it. So let's go ahead and start applying some glue and sticking the material down to this piece. All right, this piece seems to be pretty tight as far as material is concerned. If I wrap this over, it's just barely covering the bottom. I know we need to stretch it, but we want to make sure we have enough material to cover both sides. So I've clamped it here on the other side just to make sure that I have enough material before I start applying the glue. So now that I know that I have enough to cover, I'll start applying the glue on this one side only. We'll work from this side and wrap it across to the other side. Well, it's definitely a challenge trying to figure out how to trim this end piece before the button goes in 
even with this as a template, I've got it kind of fitting okay. I've got the uh, new buttons ready to go. So we'll see if we can get this glued in and looking half decent. The rest of it looks pretty good. It's just these ends are proving to be a real challenge. I, there's no way even I could tell you or describe for you how to do this. So I'm just basically trying to figure it out myself, doing small cuts here and there without trying to screw it up because I don't have another piece of leather to work with. So we'll do the best we can. So let's see how this turns out. All right, guys, welcome back. It's the next day and we're on to the final two pieces, which are the uh, the dog leg capping for the B post, which is apparently the, supposed to be the most difficult piece to cover. I did finish off the uh, second door capping last night before bed and uh, it came out not too bad. There's a few wrinkles here and there, but uh, nothing that I can't live with. This is apparently the most difficult part. So I have this little buck here uh, designed. Uh, borrowed from some of the guys that have done this previously, borrowed from photos off the internet, just a little wedge in here, which will actually hold this capping in place so we can pull and stretch it a little bit easier with the leather covering. So we have cleaned it off with Windex. We're just about to start laying some glue on the center here, and then we'll start pulling it uh, left and right and down to the bottom before we wrap it around. And we'll try to get as many wrinkles out as possible. We have our steam machine standing by as well to help us with the wrinkles and we've got the heat gun as well if required but uh, we'll do the best we can stay tuned guys I did my best and I'm actually pretty happy with the uh, results it took uh, a bit of effort to get there but it's not too too bad uh, it's definitely better than what came off the car <laughs> so that's usually what I do as far as comparison is concerned I'm not making it any worse that's for sure anyway a few wrinkles up here but uh, we worked our best to try to uh, to get them out with uh, both the heat gun and with the steamer again some guys will go to the extent of actually soaking this leather entirely I didn't really want to do that. So I'm quite happy with the results the way this turned out. So if I get the second one to turn out as well as this one did, then I'll be happy. So anyway, one's done. Let's uh, finish this project up and get the other uh, B-post capping done. And then we'll uh, bring you back for one last shot of all the components together. All right, guys, we're going to put an end to this project. But I wanted to give you a quick overview of the uh, pieces that I covered in the last couple of days. They turned out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with them. They're again, not 100%, but they are uh, much better than what uh, was on the car originally. So uh, I can say that I'm gonna be quite happy with these. Um, on display, I've got the door panels and the back panel. So the back panel needs a little bit of work. It needs to be mounted on a backboard. And we'll probably do that as part of our next project. But you can see the uh, wheel arch uh, covers or wheel arch uh, panels as well as the door panels 
Those are actually the wheel arch covers over there. Needs to be a little bit of foam applied to the wheel arches before those are applied. But other than that, we've got everything else ready to go as far as the interior is concerned. So, like I said, I'm pretty happy with the way that these uh, items covered. Uh, I'll give you a little bit better look at them. There's the the front pad, obviously. There's a little bit of wrinkling on the the bottom ends, but overall not too bad. Again, this is the top side, which is the really the area that's going to be seen. You won't really see underneath there anyway. And this looks actually quite good. So I'm happy with that. So that turned out well. This is obviously covered in leather, this panel. This panel here, this uh, rear panel is covered in vinyl and actually a good match, which is good. And that was a fairly easy panel to do. Uh, again, it had a few dents in it that we tried to knock out and I think it looks pretty good. These are the uh, panels that go in front of these panels and uh, they looked pretty good as well. We've got a little bit of extra fabric on the end, as mentioned, that it gets tucked into these panels at some point. So those look good. Here are the hardest panels to do, and I'm quite happy with the way that these turned out. Again, a little bit of wrinkling there, but not bad. Pretty good, a little wrinkle here, but other than that, they look pretty good, I would say, considering these are in leather, and it's a little bit more difficult to uh, work with other than the vinyl. So a little, little wrinkling up there, but uh, overall, pretty happy with that. Again, uh, you probably noticed in my little time-lapse videos, the little buck I made, the little wood buck really wasn't really useful for me. Uh, working on the coffee table here, it was just easier for me to pick them up and manipulate them by hand. I'm assuming if you're working out in the garage at, uh, at a you know workbench at vice level, that might be a little bit more helpful out there. But for me, it was just easier just to grab it by hand and, uh, and stretch it. So anyway, happy with those. And the final ones are the, uh, the tops of the doors, again, with the little button finishers on the end. And those look pretty good. I did get uh, a little bit of a dent in this one, pushing it in, unfortunately. I'll have to replace that button at some point. But anyway, these turned out pretty well. Remember, these are the ones that had the batting on top of the uh, their little rubber uh, round um, molds. So those look pretty good. This one, again, covered pretty well with the buttons in both ends. And it looks pretty darn good. Not too many wrinkles. Maybe a few little wrinkles up there. But again, these are where your arms are going to rest on. So they're going to be getting some wrinkles in them anyway over a period of time. So pretty happy overall with this project. Like I said, the next item to do will be this back panel. And that will probably be the next video I do. Following that, we have a seat kit, in the, obviously in the same color. So I've never done a, a set of seats on a TR3 before. So that will be new to me as well. So I'll definitely bring you along when we start that journey. Okay, that's it for tonight, guys. Uh, we'll upload this uh, so you can take a look. Again, it's not really a instructional video. It's kind of a more here's what I'm doing video. But uh, it may help some of you in some regards uh, in your project. All right, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, commenting. And thanks for subscribing. And we'll see you on the next one.